Hey, traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, July 9, 2024. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on that docket today? Well, we have another narrow ranging day in the S&P. As you see here, this candle here was very similar to yesterday's candle. They went up a little bit, but stayed put or pat pretty much all day long. She is on a very slow motion, grind, upward, melt up operation. One thing we have to keep in mind in these low volatility, low volume type of tapes is that what follows low volatility is a pickup in volatility. Somewhere along the line, there will be a little bit of a tug on the rug underneath Mrs. Market. Whether that's going to be as a result of the CPI data release tomorrow on Wednesday at 8.30, the PPI, or some other event, the market will correct a little bit. We will have a pickup in volatility, but until then, we just have to go through our normal process of analyzing the market, get our numbers ready, because when she moves, we want to be, as they say in the trading parlance, prepared. When you look at a day like yesterday from an intraday perspective, a day like today from an intraday perspective, it's obviously not a trader's tape. Yesterday, she went sideways all day. Today, there's a little bit of a gap higher open and she goes sideways all day. Never filled yesterday's gap, never even came down, came very close within pennies, but never even touched our morning pivot. As you see here on the bottom, when we discuss volume, we have essentially waning velocity on the way up. That doesn't necessarily tell us anything in particular. The market essentially went up on low volume, from the 2009 low. So that's not out of the ordinary. I do get a lot of questions from traders about, hey, aren't you nervous about the low volume? No, it doesn't make me nervous. It's just low volume. I just take it at face value. When we have a pickup in volume and it's on the downside, that will raise an eyebrow. But as you see here, we had a pickup in volume on the 28th of June and nothing happened. So right now, we accept her for what she is. The trend is your friend. It's in a melt-up type situation until she's not. She will put in a sign and or signal of a trend change. There'll be some kind of an intraday reversal. There'll be some kind of a gap down. One of those things will happen from exactly what price and what day, we don't know. And we certainly don't pretend to know. Four-hour chart, just meandering well above its home base. Therefore, we know she's getting a little bit, quote-unquote, air quotes, extended away from home base. Same to similar goes from the daily chart. Can she go higher? Of course. She just won't get too far from home base. As you can see here, every time she gets a little bit far from home base, she tends to come back to pay a visit, run a test, around home base. Some traders in the futures markets will use an 18-day moving average. Some traders will use a 21-day moving average. I use a 20-day moving average. It's all really the same. It's in the same camp. Two-hour chart, just meandering, eating time off the clock. One-hour chart we looked at, meandering, gap up, eat time off the clock all day long. That's all that happened. No material change to the chart. The volume was extremely low today. It was one of the lowest days of the year. Look at the volume down here. You draw this line across and you say, hey, look at that. That's basically the lowest day of the year. There's nothing lower than this. Lowest day of the year for the most part. There's nothing lower. The last lowest day like this was November 24th, 2023. There was a little less than 30 million shares. Today, the volume was... 27 million shares. This is still the lowest day since then anyway. You could also take the viewpoint that Mrs. Market's lulling you to sleep. We had Jerry's testimony today. He testified in front of the Senate Banking Committee. Tomorrow will be the House Financial Services Committee. All you have is a bunch of representatives 
that are asking questions provided to them by their staff. They mostly have no idea what they're talking about. And they're putting on a dog and pony show for the people watching, which totals about 18 or 19 total. Not thousand, not million, people. We have earnings getting kicked off later this week. Maybe Mrs. Market's waiting on earnings. The bank will start reporting late this week, early next week. Then everything gets kicked off. For the next six, eight weeks, you get fast and furious earnings across the entire marketplace. Certainly, we would expect some volatility to come back in in both directions. Some days will be whoppers on the upside. Some days will be rug pulls on the downside during earnings season. We'll call this the calm before the storm. Anybody make money today in the live room? Help a brother out. Post it under the video. Some of you took the short early in the morning at the number, in air quotes, the number. We'll cut right to the chase from an S&P perspective. This was a number on the board before the opening bell. 556.70, 556.75. We're splitting hairs over pennies. That was a number that was provided as an area of resistance. They did pull back, albeit small, but the market was in a narrow range today. So we basically, from the morning perspective, caught basically the high and the low. The low was just above the pivot, and we'll see that in a moment. Before we get to the notes, here's another trade that came up during the live room session. We had PTC. You could see here the 177. 60 area was the number. This was a trade early in the morning. They gave it to you quick. Nice bounce. Gave you two, two and a half bucks. Nice trade. Live room, real time situation. Dater dog. We had another one in Dater dog today, only we wanted it here at 11 o'clock in the morning. They didn't come here. They bounced away. They came up short. Then they did it later in the day. The numbers work, by the way. They just didn't do it in the manner in which from a trading perspective. We had an intraday opportunity in Camp IWM today down at 200.50. We had some front runners. They came up a few pennies short. 53 was the low against 50. That counts for the give or take. Nice rip. We had some nice profitability show up with traders that took the IWM long. Again, live room, real time trading situation. Here are the notes. Remember, pause the video, read the notes, double check the work. I'm going to highlight a few important things that can benefit you if you're an intraday trader in the S&P. Here we got up north. The only thing we have is a formula driven zone found between 556.70 and 557, give or take a 30 cent zone. That was today's formula driven zone. At new highs, not that easy to pick out where the market would A, be attracted to, magnetically find resistance at, with enough confidence to put a trade on the table. Not bad for a rookie. Our pivot today was down at 555.45. They tried it four times, maybe five or six, depending on how you want to look at it, throughout the day, couldn't get down to the pivot. I find that interesting. It's not that the pivot was wrong. You could say that. You could say I was wrong today. I didn't have the right pivot. But I use the same formula, the same process to come up with the pivot each and every day. So the way I have to look at it is they didn't get to the pivot. So this is what I do know going into Wednesday morning. Below 555.45 is going to be one type of tape. And above it is the same tape we ended with today. So I'm already telling you in advance not that that has to be our bona fide pivot tomorrow. Depends on where the market is. Depends on whether they move them on the CPI information. But I'm already zeroed in on 555.45. It's important. And you basically saw all the numbers that were necessary laid out at zero dark 30, all before the opening bell even rang. I'm going to scroll up, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. But the bottom line is we had the top and we had at least a little bit below the bottom today as the pivot. Therefore, not a lot else happened. Very narrow range. One SPY trade and a handful of stock trades for the live room. Not a bad morning either way, especially in a quiet tape. What's going on over in Camp 
IWM. Well, they were down today about four or five tenths of a percent, 88 cents. Now, the spider was basically flat ish, up 50 cents, but one tenth of 1%. So there was some relative weakness in Camp IWM. That's of note. It's a puzzle piece. We're putting it on the table. It's a divergence. The IWM chart still looks materially different than the S&P. You have lower highs. Yes, we still have higher lows, but we have lower highs. Nowhere near the same look as the S&P. There's something different on this chart that will prove important from a longer term perspective. You can write that down. Mark my words on that one. No material change on the chart from yesterday. They're just down a little bit. They're stuck in amongst these moving averages. We're not going to read anything else into this activity. We're going to make the assumption that the market's going to move Wednesday or Thursday or both on the economic data shuffle alphabet soup situation, CPI, PPI, whatever alphabet soup they want to throw at it. Divergence number two, the transportation people. We talked about 14.9, give or take, last night. They're headed in that direction. We have a divergence in the IWM. We have a divergence in the transports. My two favorite market leading indicators, transports, favorite canary in the coal mine. What we do know about divergences, they will resolve themselves. Either these two, IWM, small caps, and the folks down at the transportation department will pick themselves up and head back in the northern direction, or... The other indices are going to crack and falter and follow suit in the southern lane. What's going on with the Q people? Up 43 cents today, on par with the S&P, up 9 tenths of 1%. Sorry, not 9 tenths, 0.09 tenths, less than 1 tenth of 1%. Flat-ish, high on the chart, at new highs, no change from yesterday. She will pull back from where and when. What we do know today, which is interesting, is look at the high of day, 500 on the button. We talk about quite frequently in the live room, I talk about it, talk about it in these videos all the time, these big fat round numbers, semi-fat round numbers. They're important numbers. The market is attracted to these numbers. They become resistance. They become support, not necessarily for a long period of time all the time, but they can. 500 was magnetic. They hit it on the button. It's a psychological completion. Does that have to be A top, V top? No, it does not. Can it be? Anything can happen. 500 is a big deal. Write that down. Put big in capital letters. There's a line up there. What's that line represent? About 518.86. Want to write that down. Why is that? Because that is a formula-driven number if the Qs continue to rise. That will become a target. It will also become overhead resistance when they get there, depending on how they get there, may constitute an opportunity. Write it down, put it on a sticky note in ink. What about the financials? Anything wrong with the financials? No. Above all the moving averages, trend is your friend. We will leave it at that. Up 32 cents today in the XLF, about 7, 8 tenths of 1%. If the financials aren't faltering, it's unlikely the rest of the market is going to unravel also. Smash Mouth didn't do much today, tried to go lower, recovered halfway through the day, ended up finishing up 60 cents, 2 tenths of 1%, didn't really do much at the end of the day. So these markets were rather quiet today. Most of them narrow ranging days rather quiet. They'll move them. It's a matter of patience. Can you wait it out? Can you wait for Mrs. Market to give you a clue, a signal, an indication that there's an opportunity at hand? This is a patience business. Wait for the thing to happen. Whatever that thing may be, we'll know it when we see it. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense 
Market Analysis.